is the exact inverse of what the lenses are doing. So again, when it comes to the eye, it will firstly field of view. Anything less than 100 degrees, you don't get immersion. It doesn't involve your peripheral vision. Your vision essentially has a very good uh, cone that it can see, but around that it's peripheral. The cone is for you to it, it sort of understand what's going on. The peripheral is for your brain to sort of subconsciously put that in context. And you can't get immersion without that context. <coughs> Beware of claims like so the Sony HMZ T1, and they all do this because it's in theory simpler. Uh, claim 12 feet away uh, from a 150 inch display or screen. Well, what does that actually mean? GCSE maths, soccer toa. Uh, it basically means it's a 55 degree display. That's nothing, that's a, that's a, that's a window. And it's great for watching uh, movies, potentially, but the problem with watching a movie is if that video screen isn't moving, then you're going to feel ill, because as you move your head, you know, you know, the screen's rotating with you, and that simulates a sickness, potentially. So that's one of the reasons that those things are a problem. Uh, there's actually uh, some software for the Oculus Rift um, that allows you to play videos by putting you in a cinema and you can sit anywhere in the cinema and it shows the screen and you turn your head you're looking down the aisle of the cinema you can change the light so you can watch videos but the key thing is if you rotate your head or something it doesn't matter the only downside is if you're on a plane and the plane banks everything goes very well <laughs> 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 that's good to deal with that um, so yes frames of reference are there different frames of reference uh, resolution of PPI. So the Oculus Rift uh, is uh, 1080p, so that's 1920 by 1080, um, but that's for both eyes. So what you'll see is a lot of claims about a resolution that sounds high until you halve it. And what's worse, if you remember that screenshot I had earlier, there's big black borders because of how the magnification is happening. So actually, you're only really seeing most of the pixels are, are the ones in the middle. So 1920 by 1080 is nowhere near what you're actually seeing. Uh, it's not enough for text, uh, and you'll see this. But where claims about megapixels, you know, this is the same with cameras. When you start, first of all, divide it by three, because they claim a pixel for red, green, and blue. Um, <laughs> and then, assuming that everyone does it, uh, and you know, four megapixels, well, that's only 1280 by 1020, 1041, and that'll be trimmed down, you know, so it'll be 1024. Uh, generally, anything with a low resolution, with a wide field of view, is going to give you a screen door effect. Similarly, anything with a low PPI. PPI, feel free to go for something with a lower PPI, as long as you're willing to have a larger screen. Because that's all it is, it's just that mapping between physical size and number of pixels. Um, lag latency. So, one of the things Oculus did a lot of work on was the path from uh, from the sensors, through, the through any fusion that's happening on the device, through the computer, through the software that does the sensor fusion, then into the game, then it pops out of the game, and it does all the distortions and then sends it to the display. Uh, they, there's a target of 20 milliseconds for that entire journey. Any more than that is suboptimal. Anything more than 60 milliseconds leads to that sort of problem. Um, so keep an eye out for anything that has a lot of hardware or is doing a lot of um, work in that chain from basically from sensor to eye, because unless dealt with, that can add lag and it'll make things bad. Similarly, frame rate, you, you need a uh, uh, 60 hertz display is not good enough for, uh, firstly, some people see flicker. Um, and it, it's weird, it's a lot more noticeable when it's all you can see. Um, and even the people who don't see flicker, 60 hertz, it doesn't sound that much of a difference from 75, but 75 up just makes it that a little bit performant because it gives it, uh, makes it easier to hit that 20 millisecond target. Um, one thing to always look at in reviews, how well does the screen handle fast color updates? Uh, what I mean there is, if you're looking ahead and you turn quickly to the side, you know, with our normal view, it updates pretty damn fast. You might get a little bit slower, but it's not, not too bad. With some of the screens, you get really bad blurring and smearing and then it doesn't stabilize until you hold your station, head stationary. And you do that and all you can see is blur, which makes playing games where you're moving your head around a lot absolutely impossible. Uh, also, with anything with an AMO LED display, which is the DK2, there's a problem with what's called black smear, which is anything that's RGB 000, I, essentially the, the pixel is off. 
it, I think the amino LED takes longer to turn a pixel on from its off state than it, uh, than it does from its almost but not quite off state, so by RGB 111. Um, what that means is that you get blurring of just black. It's really freaky. It's like this dynamic shadow whenever you move your head. It's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> so that's that. And then finally, sensor fidelity. How good is the tracking? Uh, so, to answer the question, is it an idea whose time has come? No, not yet. It's close though. And for the first time, we can sort of see on the horizon that it is doable using known techniques. Like we know the things we have to do to get there, I think. And by we, just a, as a quick aside, I do not work for Oculus. I don't work for any VR company at all. Uh, I'm just really into it. Um, so, resolution, as mentioned earlier, uh, you know, we need a much higher PPI on the screens. This is one of the things about uh, Oculus, you know, again, using them as an example, uh, or when Samsung starts playing in this space, um, they can start now ordering. Now that Oculus has been bought by Facebook, which a lot of people hated, but they can now start ordering custom screens rather than consumer screens at large enough bulk or other subsidies to get PPIs that really mobile phones don't need because unless you're holding your phone like this you'll never because that angular resolution will never need it that's why any PPI above I think so 441 I think you have to hold the screen 26 inches away from your face in order for you to be able to uh, um, sort of tell the difference. Any, anything closer than 26 inches, your eye really can't see the difference if you 2020 vision. Um, HDMI is a big problem. People think of, you know, it's a cable. It works. It's a cable that has a clock rate. And different versions have different clock rates. And version 1.4, which is what most people are using, maximum resolution is 3840 by 2160. And that's at 30 hertz. To get 75 hertz, well, you're going to have to shrink it half and a bit. Even with version 2, it's nowhere near the resolution and the clock speeds that we need. So there'll be new standards of HDMI needed, which means do the laptops and things. Yeah? Why don't we just use the display board, which is kind of built more than this? Yes, uh, I don't know what the maximum resolution is for display port. 8K. 8K. Okay. <laughs> so, considering uh, we want 6,000 by 6,000 per screen, so we want 12,000 by 6,000, still not enough. But 8K is a lot better. But then what is 8K? What's the, what's the actual resolution for 8K? What by what? I think it's double what HDMI 2 is. Okay. Ah, well, yeah, that would help. Uh, so that we may well see a uh, display port soon. It's my laptop that has that. Um, GPUs. Even getting 75 Hz at 1920 by 1080 for a video game is not easy with modern hardware. Uh, well, with, with OK hardware. Realistically, uh, people are going to have to start buying gamer-grade laptops, or, or it might actually be a time for a move back to desktops for a lot of people. Um, so that's something, again, GPUs that do this do not exist yet, at least not for sensible prices. Uh, user input, you can't see the keyboard. So I actually have a video of a solution for this. Um, so this is the Virtuic Zombie. <coughs> Uh, so that's basically a slippery pad of plastic that you can run on and he's actually got a plastic gun that has accelerometers on etc and he's got a head mounted so he can walk in one direction, shoot in another and look in another. Now the Omni has issues uh, but we, something that's been talked about in some of the forums is whether we might see arcades coming back where there'll be banks of these. One good thing is if it becomes popular you'll have a lot slimmer keys. <laughs> imagine, imagine going for a walk in Skyrim. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there's a, there's a lot of other uh, user input devices that are being looked at. You know, a lot of people use the Xbox controller. Um, there's a thing called the uh, Razer Hydra that detects sort of two things that detect where they are in space, but they're a complete nightmare because it's like a dozen buttons. And, the big problem is you can't see anything because you're wearing the head-mounted display. Um, haptic feedback would be nice, and nobody knows the medical effects long term. Uh, you know, people don't really think about this necessarily, but from the military simulators, uh, that's where a lot of research has happened. With the military simulators, I read about one report where uh, a US officer had come off a like, six-hour, eight-hour mission where he'd basically been on, on an HMD the entire time. And he was walking home, and literally, the world flipped. 
upside down. Because you know that your, your brain sees everything upside down and, and corrects it, and you can actually trick your brain, uh, your brain backwards and forwards by getting lenses that flip. Well, his, he was just walking down the road. Now imagine he was driving a car. Um, I, you know, some of this sort of stuff, who knows what's going to happen, but I, I see lawsuits happening in America. <laughs> Uh, finally, for those of you who are game developers or might be interested, just some thoughts. Um, using either Unity, the, the expensive version, unfortunately, or Unreal Engine 4, you get Oculus Rift support for free. Uh, essentially, uh, in video game design, you normally just have a, a camera or a viewport. Uh, you just use the Oculus one and it magically works. It's pretty cool. Other engines, your mileage might vary. Now, for the considerations, what I want to do is just play you a clip from uh, Half-Life 2, Episode 2, whilst we uh, look at this, this is pulled off YouTube. Um, okay, so how tall is the player? You don't know, and you don't care. Uh, you do care when you look down at the falls 15 meters away from you. <laughs> in fact, most games are developed on, you know, say, Unity, where everything is generally a unit high, that's one meter. So I'm two meters taller. It means things don't quite work the way they should. Uh, so you have to use actual uh, scaling. Um, acceleration is one of the big causes of simulator signals. The human brain doesn't detect velocity. Uh, it detects acceleration, it changes in velocity. Now the problem is, uh, I think we go to like here, uh, oh, in a moment, okay? How quickly did he walk sideways there? Well, because of the scaling issue, uh, people have estimated when playing some, I'm not sure about this, but some games, you're walking sideways at 20 miles an hour. You're walking <laughs> forwards at about 35, 40. Now you try going sideways, like sit in a car uh, with a friend, accelerating up to 20, then braking, accelerating up, braking, so on and so forth, with your eyes seeing something else, you will vomit. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, latency and lag, you know, a big deal. It's actually, it's actually better to have constant crappy lag, like you're constantly running at you know, 30 hertz than it is to be here at 75 hertz, 60 hertz, so on and so forth. Because again, your brain gets used to something that's co constant. It's when things are chopping and changing, again, vomit. Um, display field of view, we talked about earlier. And the last one is the user remaining in control. It, it, nobody knows why, but uh, generally, if, if you are moving your head and the camera moves, your brain can deal with it a lot better than in a cutscene where you've got a camera doing all sorts of cool swoopy into the dying corpse. Yep, you know what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, I think that is it for uh, the virtual reality talk. Uh, so I'll be doing demos uh, in the back there somewhere, probably, and or near a bar because we're a long way from a bar here and I need my beer. Um, <laughs> there will be updates on Twitter. Uh, I've got a range of demos available. I've got uh, Elite Dangerous, if anybody wants to play the beta. That's epic. On, um, they, they've done everything right. My laptop's borderline for playing it, but um, and you, you can see the shortcomings of the resolution with uh, the display, because you can't read text very well. But the tr uh, one, of the, you know, one of those really like wow moments was when I was playing it, and a pop-up display uh, popped up. And the Rift can now not just uh, sense rotation, but also translation. Uh, and I leaned in and read the text. And I was like, that was epic. <laughs> it sounds like nothing, but when you do it, you'll see what I mean. 